everybody welcome back days well spent so we finally got some rain after three months of nothing like absolutely nothing and three months of 100 plus degrees cooled things down and all of a sudden the garden took off now, i'm not going to say it took off where we where we needed it which was like our tomatoes and stuff those are gone but uh you know our herbs in our Vigo garden beds, our raised beds, are doing just phenomenal. They're doing great. We love it. We're actually going to pick some of them today and uh, dry them. Uh, so like the basil, we're going to dry that and get some, get some uh, dried basil. The uh, the purple leaf basil, we're going to do that as well. But uh, the mint, we got the, the, I think it was ginger mint. Um, it just took off. And there, there's a habanero pepper right there. But let's go back and uh, show you what happened in the garden and uh, what I did to it yesterday. So there you go, nothing left. Um, I just got to the point where they were just dead. So I started cutting them, cutting them back. I leave the roots in the ground. Um, it, you know, it's still good for uh, mulching and, you know, composting the, the ground. Um, we did leave the, the peppers are doing a lot better though. Uh, with As it got cooler, they started growing real well. Uh, something else that I did, which I didn't even really think about it first was when I have to uh, change the hydroponic water because you know we're starting to uh, do some hydroponic stuff uh, I'm using that old water in the garden now especially in our, our potted plants and at this point of the stage of the uh, the hydroponic growing they're in the, uh, the 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 growth stage so they need a lot of nitrogen so when I emptied that that first uh, I had 30 gallons of it I emptied into the garden a pot of plants and all of a sudden these things just took off like crazy. So now I'm seeing that my hydroponic uh, water and fertilizer are going to have a dual purpose that I can use it in our garden and our potted plants as well. So that really excites me that it's not going to go to waste. Um, we got this little, this tomato here is still holding on. I'm real excited about it. I think Marga got got the seeds from somewhere for for free. I I don't remember, but there's there's hundreds of these little tiny blooms on it. I don't even know what kind of a tomato it is, but uh, I dumped some of the hydroponic uh, you know uh, fertilizer on it, and it just took off. It got super green, and now it's in the bloom stage. So I need to start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and feed it some. Uh, uh, phosphorus and potassium to, to push those blooms and, and make some nice fruit. Uh, I did the same thing here with our lantana. You can see the it's starting to bloom. It's actually gone through a whole bunch of bloom cycles. A uh, few days back it was just covered with those orange blooms. It was beautiful and that was that was after I did that hydroponic water as well. The bees are still alive in the new hive. Uh, excited about that. I started feeding them uh, pollen patties. I had to, they're just, they just weren't getting anything, uh, you know, for, for building the hive and drawing comb out. Um, they, they had about four frames that still needed to draw comb and uh, I need to get another box on it, but they gotta, they gotta fill that bottom one up to about 80% first. Uh, and they just weren't there. I'll probably check that within the next couple weeks and hopefully with the pollen patty and the rain now where things are like you can see in bloom, they'll be able to get knock nectar and, and pollen and grow the hive for the winter. Our main hive is the same way. Um, it's it's there. It's active, like really active compared to where it's been. You can, you can see them going in and out. I went ahead and uh, I took the honey super off the top. I had to. They weren't doing anything with it. They were they they were just trying to maintain the health of the hive. Uh, so I, I wanted to push them to grow the hive. For the winter so I, I i took the honey super off fed them pollen patty i'll check them at the same time in a couple weeks and see if they need more food um, because they've got about four frames in the top brood box that are that are empty that they haven't even started drawing comb out on you see our lemon and lime trees are doing well there's a lime right there that's a new one uh, we fed those with the uh, hydroponic solution as well and they just they took off pretty exciting these jalapenos we got blooms on them they were done with the, the uh, hydroponic water as well after we used it up so everything's doing real good we got a that's a habanero that's a chili piquin 
and then that one right there is a uh, jalapeno and then that tomato there has just held out all all summer and now it actually turned a lot greener that the weather got cooler and it was fed with the hydroponic uh, water as well so coming into the greenhouse we got this real gigantic tall habanero plant it's probably three feet tall now hasn't hasn't bloomed but it's definitely growing different in the greenhouse than the ones that we have outside but here's what's exciting to me right now is these are the hydroponic plants that I showed you last month they're about two feet tall now and they're kind of leggy and part of that's because of light I just don't have the light that I need out here if I had full sun they'd burn up anyways being in a greenhouse but they've done really well um, the hydroponic system is working so these are the ones that we started out in those um, in those mason jars that I showed you last month we were using the uh, Kratsky method on or Kratsky method on um, two of them and I did a bubbler in three of them these were the ones in the bubbler then I moved them outside and let me lift one up here for you and look at that that's the root system now it's just phenomenal so I'm pretty excited about the way the tomatoes are going here but what I want to do is show you the difference between these that got started at the same time in the mason jars with bubblers and the ones in the mason that we left in mason jars without bubblers the first set of tomatoes I showed you out there are the real big ones with the real healthy root system. Uh, these are the same ones that we that were done at the same time in the same jars, but we left these in the jars without a bubbler. And I'm actually just going to throw them away today because you can see how they are in comparison to those big three-foot monsters outside. You can see the roots are not bad, but they're just not growing. And they're under, uh, they're under grow lights too, and they're they're just not doing anything. So there's a huge difference in the uh, the Kratsky method versus a bubbler to aerate the uh, the water, uh, and obviously the bubbler works a lot better. Okay, these three, uh, we started a couple weeks later, and instead of using a wicking method, like we did with the first those uh, previous ones I showed you, we actually used a uh, inert growing medium and just grew the seeds pulled them out of the medium moved them to the the net cups and put them in the uh, propagation tray and I kind of pulled them out too early I didn't have much of a root system I mean I'm still learning this but uh, they did pretty good but kind of like the other ones they're they're a little bit leggy out here so um, we'll see what happens as far as growth goes but let's go inside I'm going to show you that we, we had I did six of them these are the three I brought out, and I left three inside, and they've, I've got those under a grow light, so I'm going to go show you the difference between these and the ones inside. Okay, so these are the same ones that I just showed you outside, the three. Uh, you can see there's a lot denser leaf growth. I've got suckers on these, too, that I'm not getting outside, so the, the light is definitely going to be a, a contributing factor to the way things grow. Now, we also, at the same time we did those tomatoes I just showed you, we did some uh, Swiss chard. Um, it's doing pretty good. And then we did some bib lettuce, which is not doing so good for whatever reason. It's, it does have new new leaves, but it just doesn't seem to be growing very well. And then we have bok choy. That's all bok choy. And it's doing superb. I'm really excited about how well the bok choy is growing in here uh, in the hydroponics. Now, I also did some sweet, sweet uh, banana peppers. And... I did a different, I did three for container pots with soil and I did three hydroponics. So these are the ones in the soil. They got some beautiful leaves. They're probably five inches tall. And then coming over here are the hydroponics ones. And you can see they're maybe three inches tall. The roots just started growing though. And I have noticed that as you get more roots, they grow faster. But as a wow, drop that one. 
but as a comparison, you can definitely see the difference in the size of the leaves and the, uh, the, the stem itself. Um, but we're going to keep these all growing, and pretty soon these are going outside. I've got some, some two-gallon buckets they're going in, and then the, uh, the ones in soil are going to get moved up eventually to one-gallon buckets, and we're going to keep those out in the greenhouse as well to do a comparison from when we started them on, on, on day one between the two. And then we've got, had a couple of tomatoes here. These are porters, and they're doing, they're doing okay. Uh, I, need to, I need to figure out where I'm going to grow them at, and that's kind of why they're still sitting into these, these propagation trays. All right, so back to where we started at the herb garden. That was about it. That's just our, our monthly update. Um, again, uh, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. And be sure and hit the subscribe button as well. And we will see you in another month with an update on how everything's doing.